je commence. 3. Hi there. Hope everyone is doing well. We're doing an exceptional pre-recording session in order to be able to discuss a very uh, interesting uh, topic on pop-up stores with Christophe. Hi Christophe. Hello Halia. Hello everyone. I'm connected How are you? overseas with you from France uh, and over to you in Dubai. Uh, correct, exactly, yes. And before starting the session and talking about pop-up retail and the specifics of pop-up stores in the Emirati market, I'm going to give you a little bit of time to introduce us to you, to your experience and specifically to your experience in retail. Okay, right. Okay, so my name is Christophe. I am originally from the south of France, a beautiful place uh, called Gers near Toulouse, where uh, uh, in Toulouse, where I studied first uh, fine art and design, and then in uh, London, I also studied fine art and uh, design. And I start my career in London actually as uh, an embroidery designer and uh, illustrator. And I got into visual merchandising a bit by chance uh, in 2005. I uh, was working on an illustration project for a Steph Cheese department store. And uh, during that project, I was working very closely with the VM uh, uh, team over there. And this is uh, how I discovered that I was really uh, interested and passionate by that uh, activity. So in London, uh, I started my career with uh, Joseph uh, and uh, Jimmy Shu. And then I moved to Dubai in 2012 for uh, Christian Louboutin. So with Christian Louboutin uh, as the uh, senior vision merchandiser, uh, I was handling uh, all the region, uh, the Middle East region, the GCC country plus India. And then uh, from Christian Louboutin, I moved to Cartier, where I was uh, handling the same uh, region, uh, including India. And right now, I'm back to my uh, first, uh, let's say, uh, love and activity, which I never uh, left anyway, which is uh, uh, illustration and uh, mural art. Perfect. Voilà. So mm -hmm. uh, in total, I actually, I've been in Dubai for eight years. Yes. Okay, we're going to concentrate actually on that period and experience in uh, that market. Uh, the, we say that um, the Emirates or Dubai specifically uh, has an interesting and exceptional retail market as consumption uh, goes at another level. People like to consume, people like to shop, and people have the means to shop, right? Can we talk about right. this market a little bit in detail? Uh, how do you see it? How it evolved? And uh, what are the customer uh, specifics in that market? Yes, definitely the market in Dubai is very specific. First, in terms of customer, you could divide the customer in Dubai in three groups. First, you have a very important uh, uh, local uh, type of clientele. Then you have a GCC clientele uh, type of customer, including uh, Saudi Arabia, which is very important for the market in Dubai. And the third one, the tourist market, uh, including all the other parts of the world. Okay. So when it comes to, let's say, the, uh, the local uh, uh, customer, okay? The way how I would define the, uh, the uh, local customer is that they love anything that is uh, new, original, you know, out of the box. And they love to be pamp pampered. So whenever, for example, a brand uh, launch a new product, uh, we need to make them feel that this product is tailored to their own uh, desire and need. Okay, they really, really love to feel special. Okay, this is for the local uh, customer. Then for the GCC customer, they love to be treated more or less the same. Okay, uh, and all these customers, I mean, either from Dubai or from GCC market like Bahrain, Qatar, or Kuwait. Uh, it's true that they have a strong, uh, very important uh, purchase power, okay? So uh, it's, it's also important 
for the brand to be able to address this uh, customer particular uh, aspiration and needs. Okay. And when we're talking about uh, these uh, personalized or more attentive uh, mm. brand gestures, does it mean that brands uh, operating in GCC uh, market have the tendency to get into more uh, personalized collections or collections that are catered to the taste of these people in these markets? Absolutely, totally. I mean, uh, whenever I was with uh, Christian Louboutin or with Cartier, we always tend, you know, to launch uh, a product specifically uh, uh, inspired by the region to be able to address this local customer uh, aspiration, you know? So it can be a capsule collection or a specific uh, product, uh, one unique product uh, speci specifically designed for the local customer, or it can be also uh, express through uh, specific events, you know, to highlight uh, a local uh, uh, custom or a specific date in the local calendar, or it can, it can also be uh, a customized uh, product, uh, product customized in the store for the local customer. You have also evoked uh, earlier that uh, these types of customers uh, like uh, products that are different, that are new, that are innovative. Um, what do you mean by that? Uh, does the product uh, being purchased has to be really uh, something that reflects uh, the person's identity or it has to show does it have to be a bling bling product H how can you explain that uh, it doesn't necessarily have to be a bling bling product but it has to be, i mean in terms of design it has to be special it has to be unique it has to be for example a product that they don't they won't necessarily find in europe because it's true that what most of these customers you know they do travel a lot and quite often to Europe or to the US. So uh, we need to come up with a product, you know, that will both highlight their uh, desire and that's something that they won't necessarily find uh, somewhere else. Okay, mm -hmm. because it's true that uh, most of our customers also love to, uh, to buy, uh, you know, uh, in, in other country uh, or in Europe or in the US. So we need to have product, you know, specific, specifically uh, designed for here, uh, here, the region. Okay. 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 So if we're summing up this, we're saying that this customer is already exposed and has the ability to go to different countries. Very much. Yes, very yeah. much. And yeah. however, if we're shopping from the same brand locally, it has to be something different in order to entice mm. him to make that purchase. Well, and not necessarily, okay, I, I was talking about the product itself, but also in terms of, uh, you know, the customer experience within the boutique, you know? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Because it's true that, for example, the level of uh, customer experience in Europe is quite high. So they are expecting, you know, to feel, uh, to meet the same level here uh, in the UAE. But we, we can also come up with, uh, uh, specific tools, you know, to make them, uh, their experience more unique, more enjoyable. Perfect. Um, retail and speci specifically uh, department stores uh, in Dubai uh, have uh, a reputation of being uh, of high quality and of injecting a lot of experiences and retail brands uh, are very interested in going and opening in these types of stores. Can you comment a little bit on uh, the retail scene in general, on uh, how department stores are being built or commercial centers are being set up and how they help uh, brands attract these types of customers? So in terms of uh, boutique, you mean in terms of, uh, well, in terms of location, well, especially uh, in Dubai, as you may know, Dubai is always evolving. You know, there's always something new appearing in the market or there's always a new mall. So whatever uh, you design, you know, to uh, welcome your customer, you need also to take into account all the new technology that may attract them. Because it's true that especially the new millennium, okay, type of customer, they love 
anything new, a lot new technology. So it can be a digital display, you know, but, uh, but we won't necessarily find uh, somewhere else in Europe, but uh, because we have the opportunity to develop, uh, to create a new boutique in Dubai. So when you create your boutique, you need to take into account all of this new technology, you know, to attract this customer. Right. Again, as I was saying, they love anything new and original and out of the box. So you always need to think out of the box. Okay. So this is really interesting. It means also that brands are willing to invest extra amounts. Totally. Totally. Yes. Absolutely. Sure. Uh, let's say, for example, this is just an example, but uh, Louis Vuitton currently is uh, working on this new uh, boutique uh, in the Dubai Mall. But in the meantime, they create this spectacular, uh, let's say it's kind of pop-up, but it's, a, it's, a, it's an, an intermediaire between pop-up and the boutique in the middle of the big fashion atrium in Dubai Mall. And this uh, pop-up boutique is absolutely spectacular. Mm. It, it, has, it is all surrounded by uh, LED you know, screen, which projects visual, highlighting the DNA of the brand. So it is extremely high catchy, you mm. know. So in terms of uh, uh, boutique implementation, you know, brands compete between each other, you know, to have the most uh, visually attractive and high catchy uh, uh, store or pop-up, let's say. If we're talking about um, uh, these commercial uh, department stores or centers, is it true that uh, people uh, in these countries uh, go out to the shopping mall? Is the shopping mall a meeting place, a social place, a shopping Absolutely, place? absolutely. Because besides being, of course, a shopping destination, a uh, shopping mall also a place where to socialize, okay? So, uh, and throughout the, the world, yeah, not necessarily during uh, summertime where it's too hot outside. So, obviously, the, the place where you will go and, uh, and socialize will be the shopping, uh, the shopping mall. But throughout the world, yeah, uh, shopping mall are the ideal location, especially in the Middle East, not only in Dubai, but all the GCC, where to do something uh, spectacular to attract your customer, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, why are we asking these questions? Because we want to reach out to the point to understand uh, why do brands uh, choose these specific locations to set up their retail stores? But more specifically, how about choosing uh, these types of locations to appear in pop-up stores? Let's talk a little bit more about these pop-up stores, Christophe. Why, yes. first of all, what are pop-up stores and why today luxury brands are so interested in pop-up stores? The pop-up stores, first of all, are, uh, you know, uh, communication tools, okay? So it's either a chance for a brand to communicate on a specific product or to communicate on the brand at the wider level, okay? Mm -hmm. So it is a chance for the brand to, to showcase its originality, its creativity, but also it's a chance for the brand to uh, wider its uh, customer profile with trying to attract other customers who are not necessarily familiar with the brand uh, mm -hmm. in first place. If I take the example of Dubai Mall, if you want to do a pop-up uh, in the Dubai Mall, you know, it needs to be uh, thought well and long in advance, especially in a prime location in, uh, in Dubai Mall, because you need to, uh, you know, to book the, the place and then it, it involves a, a specific cost, okay? So it is also a way for the brand, if you manage to get a prime location in the Dubai Mall, it's the way for the brand to uh, showcase its power and its uh, credibility in terms of, uh, you know, of brand, you know, if I, basically as a brand, if I manage to get this prime location, uh, you know, it show that I have a certain power, okay? Yeah. So it is, a, it is also a way for the brand to compete between each other, okay? And then uh, it is true that, uh, uh, as I was saying uh, uh, first, that to have 
uh, uh, pop up uh, uh, again in prime location in Dubai Mall, it is a perfect uh, uh, way to uh, attract uh, the maximum of people, you know. So in terms of visibility, in terms of visibility, of course, yeah. and in terms of a brand awareness. Perfect. So we're choosing these types of malls to be there, to be present, to get in touch uh, with a bigger target audience and maybe acquire new ones and also pinpoint ourselves on that uh, retail map as being uh, there, as being uh, an integral brand and increasing our brand equity. Um, exactly. uh, and, these, and these types of uh, pop-up stores, as we were talking, might also uh, go beyond uh, the traditional retail as we, we know it into venturing into concepts or uh, mm -hmm. atmospheres that are really different. Uh, as, exactly. a, as a visual merchandiser, mm -hmm. can you comment a little bit on how pop-up stores develop their atmospheres, what they have the tendency to develop in terms of custom uh, concepts, uh, design, etc.? Okay, it depends because um, at the brand level, you know, when you decide to do a pop-up, usually it is part of a communication and marketing strategy, okay? Mm -hmm. So when you think about doing a pop-up, you need to think about it long in advance. You know, when you, for example, when you, you work on your strat plan for the whole year, you know, if you have spe specific product launch, or if you have uh, at a certain uh, point, uh, moment in the year, the need to uh, communicate on your brand at a wider level, you know, you need to include it in your uh, marketing, marketing and communication strat plan, okay? Right. And then, in terms uh, of budget as well, you know, most of the budget are defined at the beginning of the fiscal year, you know, so the, the pop-up uh, usually include a specific uh, budget, you know, so it needs to be budget and plan well in advance. You cannot come up, uh, for example, in the middle of the year with the idea to create a pop-up if you have not uh, budgeted first, okay, this is very important. Mm. And we, when we're talking about these types of budgets, I'm, I'm, I'm smiling at you because mm -hmm. we always have a, a controversial conversation about how much does a pop-up cost, you know? Because yes. we have the tendency to say that it's a pop-up store, it's there for a limited period of time and it might not cost a lot but the way you're portraying it you're saying that no it has to be pre-planned it costs of a, a important amount of because you, exactly i mean you have the technical aspect of the pop-up mm -hmm. okay which usually depending on the complexity of the pop-up itself but usually it's, it represents a certain amount of money and then you have to take into consideration the uh, booking of the space you know yeah. The yes. most premium the space, the most expensive it would be. Right. But of course, if you want to target a wide audience, you need to make sure that you, have, that you will be in the in the right location. Otherwise, there's no need to do it. Right. Correct. Mm. And 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 this and this means that we're talking about pop-up stores who have an objective of acquiring uh, a wider pro a public uh, or a general type of public. However, when exactly. we were discussing uh, the topic of luxury pop-up stores together, you evoked an important uh, idea related to pop-up stores that might be more reserved or maybe directed to uh, a premium uh, clientele. Can you comment? Yes. A on that idea okay let's say that for example uh, in question i got a chance to create pop-up for these two different uh, uh, opportunities so first uh, uh, the first pop-up i created with question Boutin was in 2015 you know it was uh, in level uh, in the dubai mall yeah. so that pop-up uh, you know, was uh, created to target a wide audience, okay? Uh, the reason why we create that pop at that time was uh, to coincide with the visit of Christian Louboutin himself uh, to the region. You know, he came to Dubai, he did uh, a shoe signing for our VIP customer in uh, our um, uh, Dubai Mall boutique. And uh, at the same time, we wanted to highlight the fact 
uh, that uh, is pre also present in the local shoe district, uh, local shoe hall. So uh, we create this uh, pop-up, you know, to uh, highlight his presence uh, in Dubai. Okay. And the second uh, uh, opportunity I had to work on a pop-up in Bhutan was, uh, as you were saying, at a purely exclusive level uh, for uh, a princess in uh, Abu Dhabi. Basically, this princess on a yearly uh, routine uh, creates this event, you know, uh, exclusively for her guests. Okay, mm -hmm. and uh, during this event, she invites uh, a few uh, luxury brands to participate uh, to showcase their products for for her guests. Mm -hmm. So, uh, in this specific example, uh, the pop up uh, was was uh, created and designed for a very exclusive clientele with no, uh, you know. Only for uh, for her guests. Uh, no uh, uh, outdoor uh, guests were uh, allowed to 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 come. Uh, yes. Yeah, so. so so we're talking uh, in terms mm. of design as well. If I if I mm. may, uh, go back with you, the, the pop up store has been pre planned. Mm. Certainly, uh, maybe in terms of space and size, it is smaller than other types of pop up stores uh, due to maybe location restrictions. However, mm -hmm. in terms of budgeting, does this pop up store uh, or was it conceived in the same brand guidelines, uh, having the same uh, design conceptions as others, or uh, as it was more private, smaller, shorter? In in terms of uh, time period, uh, was the investment lesser in terms of uh, design or atmospherics? Can you comment on that? Okay, so in terms of audience, it was absolutely private. But in terms of design, there, were, there was no restriction at all. <laughs> the bigger, the better. The, the most, uh, you know, uh, visually attractive and opulent, the better, you know. So it was a chance also for the brand to uh, showcase its creativity and its, and its uh, power, you know. Yeah. Knowing that this type of clientele was very exclusive, very VIP, with a very strong purchasing power. So it was an opportunity also for the brand to create something new and unique, but mm -hmm. for a very, very exclusive uh, clientele. And certainly this type of clientele uh, is a leader maybe on, on the market and would uh, create a positive word of mouth. Uh, exactly, exactly. So, so, yeah. so in these cases, we have uh, looked at one brand, uh, one uh, concept, but two different types of operations related mm -hmm. to different types of uh, audiences. And this takes us back to the initial uh, brand strategy and brand objectives. Uh, I mean, when, when creating pop-up stores uh, since, since 2015, when you have started uh, working on these types of projects, uh, was the development of pop-up stores uh, with uh, the brand, Christian Le Boutin, uh, something clear in the mind of the brand, or was the brand, during the beginning of these types of projects, uh, more into a testing mode? Uh, for the princess uh, project, it was more into a testing mode because the, the brand didn't necessarily un understand why we should do create something uh, you know unique and that big for a very uh, limited uh, type of clientele. Yeah. So it was also uh, up to the Middle East uh, office to uh, convince them about. The opportunity that this project represented, and uh, and it was also a chance for the brand itself to uh, communicate at an exclusive level with this VIP customer. Right. Okay, mm -hmm. completely different with a, a pop up. Uh, we could create it in a public space. It is a totally different uh, way of uh, uh, thinking and uh, proceeding. Sure. Right. Uh, now, in your experience, and uh, as you are more active on the market, 
since uh, 2012 and uh, till date, many brands have developed many pop-up stores. Uh, what right. caught your attention between or amongst these types of brands and their, their pop-up stores? Any, any concepts that really caught your attention or uh, any... Yes, I can, uh, sorry, I can remember a few pop-ups that really catch my attention. In Dubai, for example, I think it was last year, Fendi did an amazing pop-up in the atrium space, you know, uh, with uh, an architecture directly inspired by a very famous mon uh, monument in uh, Rome. So uh, it was a pop-up that was definitely communicating uh, on a wider scale on the DNA of the brand itself, you know, because yeah. when you would see that pop-up with this very strong, uh, powerful uh, architecture, you would immediately recognize it, but it is Fendi, you wouldn't need any logo for it. And it was very visually uh, powerful, impactful. Uh, I remember also uh, Dolce Gabbana recently, just now, I think, they, uh, they did an amazing pop-up uh, in Dubai Mall as well, which uh, in this case is completely different. It's inspired by their uh, current collection. So it showcased this jungle, uh, uh, luxurian jungle mood, you know, but it is absolutely beautiful, uh, very uh, eye-catchy and immersive, okay? And in terms of design, it's very refined. Uh, remember as well Prada doing some beautiful pop-up uh, in, the, in the Dubai Mall. So, uh, yeah, I mean, it's all about uh, how to uh, visually communicating on your brand, uh, but with expressing, you know, uh, the DNA of your brand, you know? Right, right. And Always staying true to the brand uh, DNA. And always, like... yeah, yeah, yeah. Even if you are communicating on a specific product or if you want to communicate on the brand at a wider level, it is important for the DNA of the brand to be uh, 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 highly, I mean, uh, immediately identifiable. Otherwise, there's mm -hmm. no point to do it. You know? Right, right, yeah. right. And um, just a last uh, curious question with these types of pop-up stores, even if you have evoked all of the examples with luxury brands, uh, do you yes. think that customers who do not have the means to afford a luxury item, are they interested or drawn by going and visiting these types of stores? Absolutely. You see so many people visiting this uh, pop up, you know, so many type of uh, customer. That's why it's an excellent opportunity for the brand, you know, to appeal to a wider audience. Definitely, because uh, this, okay, a person with a lace uh, power purchase might still be uh, interested in uh, uh, purchasing the brand, but uh, maybe uh, a product, uh, you know, not necessarily that expensive, you know what I mean? But mm -hmm. it's still a chance for the brand you know, to appeal to a wide audience, to a wider audience, uh, right. definitely, yes. Perfect. Uh, Christophe, uh, in, your, in your opinion uh, and with your uh, retail experience and specifically uh, in, the, in the Dubai market and you see, uh, what can you give uh, as ideas or maybe enlightened brand managers and retailers who wish to develop pop-up stores in that market? So for the Middle East, so for them, uh, first of all, you need to, to take into consideration, you know, the uh, local uh, uh, calendar, okay? Because it's true that uh, the Middle East uh, follow different customs, you know? So, uh, than, the, than the, uh, the West, for example. So, uh, let's say uh, in Dubai, um, I would consider it, it as quite uh, uh, wise to create a pop-up uh, either uh, during Christmas or Ramadan, uh, you know, during the year. Because, Ramadan, why? Because uh, at the same time, it's a chance, you know, to address uh, a local custom and local clientele love that, of course. And during Christmas uh, in, in Dubai, why? Because uh, you have, it's, it is a period uh, in the year where you have uh, a lot of tourists, okay? And, and Christmas appear both to uh, local customer and the uh, and, uh, foreign customer, okay? Oh. But I wouldn't say that doing a pop-up uh, during the summer is a very, uh, I mean, it's very uh, strategic. Why? Because uh, summer is the quietest 
period uh, in the UAE, okay, in terms of uh, tourism, and the most of the local customers also are abroad during summer. They don't stay in Dubai eh, because it's too hot. Mm -hmm. And it's true that if you go to the mall in summer, it's very quiet. Mm -hmm. But from November, let's say from November till uh, April, May, it's the best time to, to do something, okay? Mm -hmm. yeah. voilà. mm. okay? And again, as I was saying, it's true that if you can also with your pop-up or also with a window design, you know, I like some specific custom like uh, Ramadan or Aïd or National Day or, or whatsoever. It's a good opportunity, you know, to address uh, 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 a local uh, custom and to try to uh, attract this uh, local customer, you know, to, well, to communicate with them. On top mm -hmm. of the, the seasonal calendar, the local season calendar and customs, mm -hmm. would you advise that pop-up stores would be inserted in uh, areas or locations around Dubai? Are there any preferences to choices of locations? See, this is, uh, again, the best location of the mall because this is where you, you will uh, find the, the, the biggest uh, footfall. But then it depends. In Dubai, you, you may, you know, Dubai is always evolving, so there's always uh, a part, a new part of Dubai that will be in, you know, yes. okay? Yes. So maybe if you, uh, you, you could, yeah, come up with the idea of uh, creating an outdoor uh, pop-up, you know, but you need to be very careful uh, in terms of uh, what, are, what is the most in location right now in Dubai, because it's always changing. Right. But on the safe side, definitely, if you do something in Dubai Mall, it's the best. <laughs> Dubai Mall or Mall of the Emirates, I mean, it's two locations for sure. It's like the two hotel of Dubai. <laughs> and you have the Burj Khalifa nearby, so uh, voila. No, but it's true that Dubai Mall is the uh, voilà, uh, most uh, famous uh, location in, in Dubai, eh? with the Burj Khalifa right nearby, so yes. Right. But then also, you can think of doing, because, okay, in the Dubai Mall, you know, uh, right by the Dubai Mall, you have the Fontaine, okay? Yeah. The Fontaine yeah. with a view on the uh, Burj Khalifa. I remember that uh, four or five years ago, uh, Hermes did a beautiful, uh, uh, it's, we cannot really uh, consider it as a pop-up. It's more like uh, an installation. Uh, yeah. right on the fontaine, you know, but it is between the pop-up and what we would call at Cartier actually objet communicant. Okay, yeah. it is yeah. a way to communicate with a very wide audience, yeah. uh, you know, on your brand. But what Hermes did, for example, five years ago, they did, it was like an exhibition, you know, uh, so a structure, uh, a world structure created on the top of the fontaine, so uh, beautiful, very impressive, and it was very immersive. I mean, you would enter this location and with uh, uh, different uh, tableaux, okay? Mm -hmm. A different uh, atmosphere uh, portraying, you know, the history and the universe of Hermès, mm -hmm. which was very beautiful, very, uh, very successful, I remember. And Cartier, two years ago, uh, did something similar, but it was a completely different uh, concept. It was uh, to highlight uh, a specific uh, product uh, for Cartier, you know, uh, uh, a watch, the Santos watch. So the structure was all uh, created and conceived around uh, the concept and the history of the Santos watch. So again, uh, to go back, uh, go back to the pop-up uh, concept, uh, we had the same approach with Hermès, uh, focusing on the history of the brand, on the DNA of the brand, and Cartier focusing on a specific product, but on the same location. Right. A huge location. Huge location. Mm. Perfect. Uh, Christophe, mm. due, due to time constraints, I think uh, we're going to wrap up uh, our uh, conversation. Uh, and I'm going to thank you uh, for your time and for taking the opportunity to discuss all of these elements together. And hopefully uh, we join uh, uh, these discussions on another note to talk about uh, your other works. Uh, and present uh, the audience with your arts and your pieces of art. 
Thank you so much for your time. Thank you very much, Ralia. Thank you very much. And have a great summer. <laughs> Same to you. Bye-bye. Bye, everyone. Au revoir.